Hello guys, so welcome to the Substance Designer Cliff tutorial I'm making right now. Uh, just before we start, uh, we start off, make sure to download the actual Substance file because uh, uh, that I'm linking down below. Because uh, we are not going to be covering the small details, we are just going to be covering what I use and how I use it. So it's more of an informational tutorial. So make sure you download that before before you start off, because this is not a follow along video. So the first thing. Uh, this is the graph. It is a bit big, but it's it's not too complicated. So let's let's dig into it. So we have the main shape here, and this is uh, this is actually I got this from a tutorial. I will be linking the tutorial down down below because it's actually really good and doesn't cover only this this thing that I did. So basically, you take a tile sampler, make a similar similar pattern to this one, and take a distance node, which will create these kind of pattern, uh, edge detected into flood fill, and with flood fill you get these weird variations, which you can then turn into gradients, and with multiple of these gradients, with all different variations, you sort of sculpt the the shapes, and as you can see, it's it's very effective. Uh, you you do them all on uh, min darken, so. The, it really sculpts the shape out, as you can see, and makes some cool variations. So that's the main shape that we are that we made. And now, this is this is the thing I also saw that is very good, and it's normal to height HQ. Even though this is not a color map, you can uh, you can get it inside of a color map, and it creates a really interesting patterns. We will be using this one more time, so it, it's a really cool node you can you can try and use in your materials. So we will be doing normal to height and then non-uniform direct non-uniform directional warp grayscale, which is very good for extruding the shapes, as you can see. The shapes kinda extrude outwards. And then we want to get rid of these small black spots. So we clamp the grayscale and blend it together. So they're not they're not as dark. And then we are slow blurring it again. And this is where we use normal to height again. So we'll be grabbing a uh, cloud stew with normal to height, and you see how the, the how how the maps create because of the normal to height, and it creates li really good variations. And we will be extruding the shapes once again with the non-uniform directional warp grayscale, and doing the same thing pretty much, just removing those black spots a little bit and then slow blurring. So this gives us this kind of main uh, main uh, main mask that we'll be using and to modify it. And after that, what I like doing, what I like to do to, rem to remove these uh, also black spots is I see, I invert the grayscale and put it into a histogram scan to get a mask. And that's, ma that's going to be a mask for blending this map so this map that we created first into this map. And this is pretty much the map that we will be using for the rest of the tutorial and just making uh, making it uh, a bit better. So first we're going to break up the edges. As you can see, it's very subtle, but it does make a big difference. It's just a fairly noise with multi-directional warp grayscale. And a quick auto levels, so we get more addition going. And then more edge breakup. So this is all very very subtle, but it it actually takes up like it it adds all up in the end. <coughs> then we are gonna be adding some scratches. So with that we just use a slow blur grayscale again with cells and clouds too, and it creates a really cool pattern like this. And with directional warp it a little bit it, that that is very very subtle, but it is it is warped and then in we invert it and we get these kind of shapes which are very good for these rocky surfaces to add those scratches and as you can see it's very subtle still but it does add the detail and now we make the edges pop out so we take take our mask and drop it into shadows with a really high value and we invert it and then subtract it from the from the original mask and then we we make these edges pop out a bit more, which will 
which will greatly benefit to, to our material later on. So <clears throat> now we now it's time to actually add the scratches. So the, the real small ones. So we just use the scratcher generator to make these sort of shapes. We bevel it to to make it like this. And then we subtract it from a really low scale uh, Perlin noise. So we we don't have them everywhere. So you see this they're all over the place, but here they're not everywhere and they don't they won't be they won't be a bother. Because if they were everywhere it would it would look not as nice. And another subtract, and now we add the spots, the little spots on uh, on the on the rocks. So basically, just the dirt with levels to to make less dirt, so to say. And then we bevel it to make it even less and a bit uh, a bit less white, and we just subtract it. And then we just add surface noise before we go to the coloring part because. Surface noise makes it makes makes the makes the albedo look a bit better. So I just added a moisture noise on top of this, which looks weird, but it 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 is good. So now it's time to move on to the to the initial to the albedo map, and we will first do an ambient occlusion on the on the, our mask. And then bevel it in, uh, then blend it in with each other. So as you can see, it creates this kind of effect. And then we're gonna blend it with fractal sum, just to add more noise to the to the actual um, to the actual rocks and cliffs. And then we do a gradient map. You can copy this gradient map, or you can even uh, take a reference photo and get your own. But this is the one I use. And basically, we do a bit of variation of it, and then even more variations of it, as you can see. It's very controllable this material, uh, this uh, albedo map, so you can you can tweak a lot of stuff in it. So we do a, a lighter one and a darker one, the variations, and blend them together with an opacity mask. And the opacity mask is using this custom node that. You will. It's it's free. You can you can get it. I'll be linking it down in the description, and you will be getting it uh, with the package. So this is the custom node we'll be using, and it's derived from before we added the surface noise. So it's derived from here, and we get these interesting shapes that we then blend into with the initial blend with this kind of noisy one. And you get this sort of mask going, and then we kiss histogram range it, and get very interesting detail as you can see, and that is the opacity. So as you can see, we went from this to this very quick, and it makes it makes all these little little detail pop out way more with color. So now we will be adding a bit more color variation. So again, levels making it a little bit lighter, and blending it together with the um, with this this mask we made, so this mask is again just a uh, ambient occlusion f derived from this from the actual one with surface noise, ambient occlusion into directional warp with the grunge map, and make it really high, and we get these details in, as you can see them. I it gets the variation going with which breaks up the. Breaks up the uniformity of the the albedo map, and now we add the dirt, which we will be using dirt node for. And dirt node, wo dirt node is really really useful for this kind of stuff. Even though my dirt is really subtle, but uh, we will be we will be using it for. Um, we will be still using this setup. So basically, we want our normal node. I placed this one here because it was easier than to place it here, but it is the same normal map. These two are the same. And you need a normal curvature and ambient occlusion to make this. And it creates these lines and re really, really good detail, which we can use to add the dirt, as you can see. And it makes it very, very good. So it adds a lot of detail. We just add linear dodge and a uniform color. And then 
<coughs> what I do is add some more coloring as you can see on this one you see these creamish colors all over that's what I do so we basically take this and it's only one blend map but yeah uh, we mix fractal sum and dirt together to create this noise and then put it into a gradient map like a really high gradient map you can you can just search up the colors you want and do do this noisy gradient map which we of course add the variations to so we can blend it in together better uh, we blend it with the map so I choose grunge map 13 because I think it looked nice and then here there is also the grunge map that is the opacity for our blend here so these two are connected so uh, it's a really simple cells and clouds which I did earlier and blended it with a grunge and you get these shapes all over and that's what you will get on the material as well so you can see the difference those creamish colors getting added you can add some other colors I thought that the cream colors look nice and then this is a very very good thing so this makes the 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 shapes pop out and makes the general albedo very very sharp and I saw this in a tutorial and it was it, it really makes the albedo way better so it's all derived from normal and we use, we use the curvature smooth, smooth and convert it into a gradient map nothing we just convert it into color but we use curvature smooth with OpenGL not not the normal DirectX so you can you can sort of see the difference it's it's very it's very weird how it works but it makes the albedo map look way better and then from the same normal we use the curvature sobble which makes these sort of masks also convert it into color and then it makes it way you see how how it makes it a bit more noisy and a bit more sharp that's what it does and that's pretty much our final albino map and for the other stuff it's it's not that much so it's the roughness map we just use the grayscale conversion from our albedo and level it out so this is where you control how how rough do you want your rocks to be <coughs> and we blend it again with the get slope and the get slope is also derived from all the way here before the surface noise and we blend it in and we get this cool roughness map and just plug it in and for the other maps that I used it's the height so heights, height is just derived from the normal one and we just use a blend for it where we just do the height the height this is just the normal height we do into an ambient occlusion a really low one so I, I found that look that looks the best and just a normal map nothing too too high so this map this this material isn't nothing hard to be exact so you'll be getting a free sample so just follow along and i hope i explained it good what what i did in the in the material and i hope you tweak it and have fun with it and use it actually and see you in the next video